This is a siren, which will be the first of the Snap Circuit's extreme projects. When I turn on the slide switch and then push and release the press switch, you hear a siren that will gradually fade away. The C3 capacitor provides electricity for the siren. It's charged by turning on the slide switch and then the energy is released by pushing and releasing the press switch. If you hold down the press switch too long, you'll use up all the energy and we'll have to reset the circuit by turning the slide switch on and off again. The quick wind up and then slow fade away or wind down of the siren may remind you of that of one that you might hear on a fire truck or at a firehouse to alert firefighters or other emergency personnel of an emergency. Because of how long it will take for the siren to fully fade away, I cannot record the whole thing. I'm very sorry. But I can start it up again. This circuit allows you to create an electronic rainstorm. When I turn on the slide switch, you will hear a clicking sound from the speaker. And it may remind you of the sound of rain falling. Right now the rain sounds like a drizzle because the adjustable resistor is all the way to the left and each uh, clicking sound can represent a raindrop. However, if you want the rain to like be pouring down, you can move the adjustable resistor all the way to the right, and you can even replace the R4 resistor with the R3 one, or even the R2 one. You hear more of a buzzing sound, but I guess you can pretend that the buzzing sound is like a torrential downpour. This circuit will sound like a leaky faucet. Turn on the slide switch and move the adjustable resistor. You hear clicking sounds from the whistle chip. Does it sound like dripping water from a faucet to you? And then this is what the leaky faucet sounds like on the lowest setting. This circuit allows the lamp and fan to be controlled independently by their own switches. When I turn on the slide switch, the lamp comes on. Then when I hold down the press switch, the motor and fan spin. But I can have both of these components on at the same time. Although probably the batteries will drain faster. But this is a circuit that was suggested by a guy from Westboro, Massachusetts. The following three projects will be demonstrations only because they require you to touch the ends of jumper wires to different shapes that are filled in with pencil lead. And this first project will explain how you can draw your own resistors. You would fill in these different size rectangles with several layers of pencil lead, which is actually a form of carbon but carbon is an element used in electrical resistors because it does not conduct electricity well. And when you place the ends of the jumper wires against either shape, you may hear a uh, sound coming from the speaker. You may have to uh, wet the metal with a few drops of water or saliva so that they would... Uh, so that would conduct better, but that's how this project works. The next project is an electronic kazoo. Once again, I can't demonstrate it because I need two hands and one is holding my phone. But 
what you would do is place the end of one jumper wire to the upper left corner of the shape and place the end of the second jumper wire right next to it and you should hear a high pitch sound. Then you would take the uh, other jumper wire, the one just to the right of the first, and move it slowly along the shape toward the right. And the pitch should become lower. It'll be just like how a kazoo works. And now for the variant of this project, you would uh, fill in these circles as you uh, saw and I didn't fill all of them, but uh, I think I just filled in parts of the circles between the lines, but as you could see, but you would place the end of one jumper wire to against the left circle and then take the other loose wire and touch other circles with it and you'll hear different notes like an electronic keyboard. And you can actually play nursery rhymes, including this one, which is Mary Had a Little Lamb. That's pretty interesting. Now you can even make a water resistor and use the circuit from uh, either Project 516, then place the loose jumper wires in a cup of water. And the sound will have a much higher frequency because lo water has a lower resistance. Also feel free to add salt or other elements to the water to see how it affects its conduction of electricity. You can even make a water kazoo by following the instructions here. This is a two transistor oscillator. As you can see it uses both the PMP and MPN transistors to work. This is also a low frequency oscillator. So when I turn on the slide switch and then hold down the press switch, you hear just a low clicking sound. Move the adjustable resistor to adjust the sound's frequency. But this is the highest it is. This project will show you how a diode works. Now, I have already demonstrated countless projects with uh, light emitting diodes, but this is a diode that only controls the direction in which electricity flows. When I turn on the slide switch, the lamp and red LED both come on. But when I turn off the slide switch, only the lamp goes out right away. The red LED will stay on for a short while until it too goes out. But the reason why the LED does not go out right away is because the diode is limiting power from the C5 capacitor, which in turn powers the, the red LED for a short period. If I had only used uh, a three snap wire instead of the diode, then the energy from the C5 capacitor will drain almost immediately because it will have a faster path to flow through. But now that the because a diode only allows electricity to flow in one direction, it can flow easily to the capacitor, but it cannot flow easily from it if you know what I mean. This is a rectifier circuit. A rectifier is a device that converts an AC voltage to a DC voltage. When I turn on the slide switch and the adjustable resistor is at mid-range, now be aware this might be loud, you'll hear a sound from the speaker and the LED a bit not bright will also come on. The U4, the signal from the U4 amplifier to the speaker is an AC voltage, which uh, switches on and off at an extremely fast rate. But the diode and the capacitor 
both act as a rectifier together and that will convert the AC voltage into a constant DC voltage. In addition, the diode allows the capacitor to charge up when the power amp voltage is high, but it also prevents the capacitor from discharging when the power amp voltage is low. So without th this, the uh, LED will not come on. It's a little complicated. And once again, this is Snap Circuits Extreme. But I do like to try to explain these projects to you better. And hopefully you will learn something interesting. This is a motor rectifier. When I turn on the slide switch, the voltage meter will measure the current on the other side of the transformer. The motor is actually creating an AC ripple in the voltage which passes through the transformer using magnetism. And the diode and the capacitor work together to rectify the AC ripple into the DC current that the meter measures. Then holding down the press switch will connect the capacitor across the motor, filtering out the AC ripple so that the current through the meter is greatly reduced, although the speed of the motor itself is not affected. This project is SCR shutdown. This circuit uses the Q3 diode, or SCR. When I turn on the slide switch, nothing happens. Note that the lever on the adjustable resistor is all the way toward the press switch. Then when I press it, the red LED comes on and it stays on. Now I'm going to move the lever on the adjustable resistor down a little bit. And now when I push the press switch, the LED comes on and stays on only when the switch is held down. When I release the button, the LED turns off. That's because when the adjustable resistor is at the right setting, the SCR, which only allows the current to flow in a particular direction, will allow the red LED to stay on. But when the SCR is out of range on the adjustable resistor, then the SCR cannot keep the LED on. This project uses the Q3 diode or SCR to control the motor and lamp. When I remove my finger from the photoresistor, the motor and fan spin and the lamp comes on. And you can actually hear some sound from the motor. Then when I place my finger over the photoresistor, the motor and lamp shut off. Be very careful when doing this because you don't want to make contact with the spinning fan. You can also wave your hand high above the circuit to control the rate at which the motor spins and the lamp lights. And once again, the SCR is controlling these two components. This project is going to show you all six forms of output that are available in this kit. And those forms of output are the red LED, the speaker, the lamp, the motor, the seven segment display, and the voltage meter, and its form of output comes from the pointer, which moves when uh, there is current flowing through it. But I'm gonna turn on the slide switch, and you hear a buzzing sound from the speaker, the red LED, lamp, and seven segment display all light, the motor spins, 
and then when you shine enough light on the solar cell, which I will explain about in a couple projects, the meter will deflect to the right. Now, it is better to use natural light than artificial light for the solar cell, but the meter will deflect farther to the right the more light it that shines on the solar cell. I Very carefully, I'm actually going to take it to a window because the sun is shining. And you can see that the meter deflects a lot further. And there you have it with the six forms of output in snap circuits. This is a transistor radio. It uses the MPN transistor in the amplifier that drives the speaker. This is an AM radio. And when I turn on the slide switch, as it usually is for AM radio, the signal is not very good. But you can hear some one talking when you place the radio in just the right spot. And you can use the variable capacitor to change the station. The adjustable resistor controls the volume. And it's at its maximum setting. Sorry for the signal not being very good, but this is just a basic transistor radio. Transistors really make electronics compact. The first transistor radios were developed in the 1950s, and they didn't need to warm up when they were first switched on. You could hear the sound right away. This is an adjustable solar power meter. The meter will rely on solar energy to work. And when I turn on the slide switch and have the adjustable resistor about mid-range, you can see how the meter deflects slightly to the right. And now, if I were to uh, expose the circuit to more natural light, you can see how the meter deflects further and further. Now I'm going to move the adjustable resistor to the right and see how much it uh, moves now. It's at the, its full greatest range. Then, if I were to cover the solar cell, look how much the current drops because obviously light cannot get to the circuit. Solar power is the only way the circuit works.